Welcome back, dear viewers. You've just heard the ziyara of Imam Sajjad salam, from Brother Ibrahim. So hopefully you've enjoyed that as much as I have. Um, on this segment now, we are going to be joined by Sister Barak Hussain from Canada, a psychotherapist. And on social media, she is um, available on under the name of The Muslim Counselor. Um, so do join me when we discuss a new topic now. Um, Assalamu alaikum, Sister Barak. Wa alaikum How are you? Alhamdulillah, yourself? I'm good, thank you. Bit bit sleepy this morning. <laughs> so sorry, viewers, if you feel that... If you notice me closing my eyes. <laughs> um, so we're going to speak about an interesting topic, which I think we associate mostly as when I say we, the layperson, um, post-traumatic stress d disorder, which is um, shortened, it's PTSD. Mm -hmm. um, so you hear about it in war veterans and, you know, the, the side effects of that. But tell us a bit more about it and, you know, who, who does suffer from this condition? Anybody can, really, who mm. has experienced a traumatic type of incidents in their life, whether it's a childhood trauma, right. sexual trauma, um, intimate partner violence or, or abuse, domestic abuse, um, anybody who's experienced bullying. Um, so there's a number of incidences that people could experience, not just necessarily war, military type right. of uh, trauma mm. that could show symptoms of it later on and so there's a variety of uh, symptoms that so become. they come later on they, they, they could be they could be immediately right. after or during yeah sometimes what happens what i've seen with my clients is that they would experience the survival mode right. they would be living in survival mm -hmm. in the moment where they don't experience these symptoms mm -hmm. until later on when they've settled you know so um, they're just trying to get through. They're trying to get from one place to another, or you know, it could be court, it could be police, it could be um, a travel, meaning a journey of people who've experienced mm. um, a displacement, so refugee, yeah. refugees. Yeah. So I've seen that with some clients that I've had where um, they they seem fine after they've been they, so they've been displaced. They've come to a new country like Canada. Mm -hmm. They have been integrated in terms of, okay, they're in school now, they're working, and then all of a sudden they're experiencing, and I'm giving an example here, yeah. of sleeplessness. Right. They're feeling, um, you know, anxiety. Um, so they'll have flashbacks. They'll have flashbacks of the incidences that took place, and they, they would say things like, why is this happening? And I'm now, fine now. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm not living there why is this happening so now why is it happening so it's a delayed reaction what's going that's on? exactly what mm -hmm. you just said it is the delayed reaction in response to the survival mode that they were right. experiencing they needed their body put up a defense mechanism in yeah. order for them to survive to get to where they are today so finally when things have been settled around Goodness, them subhanallah yeah. how the trauma re-emerges yeah. especially because it wasn't addressed they needed yes. to survive yes they needed to you know get rid of that attacker that was trying to rape them or did you know for example yeah. or there was a war zone so i'm giving you extreme yeah. circumstances for but example people are going through these things absolutely aren't they? Yeah. and in this day and age we are yeah. seeing so much of people who Definitely. are being di displaced and who are being sexually assaulted and it's really um it's actually so interesting that you said that you know at that time your body isn't giving you an option to deal with it it's just saying fight or fight, fight isn't it and if you your body's then saying right you need to get through this and then when you get to your destination i am going to you know break you down and that that breaking down it can be confusing, can't it? Because you're thinking, but I'm supposed I to be happy. I'm, yeah, exactly. I've survived. And, and and actually, I've never thought of, you know, um, that that is a delayed reaction. And it's because, you know, sometimes you do think, well, hang on, that I've gone through it. I've, absolutely. So what what would people start to see as the symptoms of, of, you know, PTSD? How would they recognize in themselves that, hang on, something's not right? Well, is it the, the flashbacks and the sleep? Flashbacks. Um, I, I find a lot of clients uh, struggle with sleep. Right. Right. Sleep. Uh, the loss of enjoyment of pleasurable activities that they had just started to wow. get into, yeah. you know, after the the incidences yeah. that took place and they've settled in. Um, so it's more uh, related around anxiety and mm. lack of trust of people around them mm. in their new area. Yeah. Um, you know, they're not doing well. Focus, focus is a big one. Right. And so they kind of attribute that to ADHD, the attention deficit yeah. disorder or whatnot, ADD. But it's, it's because you cannot, you're not getting the proper sleep. You're not getting the proper way for your brain to, to, you know, regenerate yeah. its cells. And, and so you're not focusing properly on the task at hand because your mind is still replaying over and over again what you've been through. And so with trauma therapy, which is, by the way, one of my favorites, 
um, forums, I get excited about mm. it and I give lots of lectures and, uh, about this because I see the result of Fantastic. doing proper trauma therapy yeah. where you t can take the client from this total place of despair to a place of their living again. Oh, it's incredible because biologically, mm. subhanAllah, what happens here is when you have a memory, mm. okay, that you keep reliving over and over yeah. and listen to this, because this a lot of people say, I'm reliving and I keep remembering, right? Yeah. This keeps coming we back. We don't let go. We don't let go. Mm. Why is it? Because the more you remember something, the more you talk about it, the more you're strengthening the neural pathways in your brain, which strengthens the memory wow. and the feeling to it. Yes. So this is what happens in trauma. Right? When you're remembering your trauma yeah. and PTSD, yeah. you have physical symptoms of response okay, to that memory where your heart is palpitating, Oof. shakes, yeah. uh, you know, sweats. And a lot of people, you'll see that in the movies, how they're, you know, they're having yeah. a, a PTSD panic attack. They're reliving a memory, perhaps. And it, it's pretty accurate, I must say. And so they are reliving, but you see the physical response to that. There, there is this you know, post-traumatic stress disorder and how soon it can emerge after um, a trauma it can be delayed. So as an example, um, and this is a, of a personal friend of mine, where they went through um, sort of childhood trauma and there was abuse there from one mm -hmm. of the parents. And it was, you know, when I hear, I, I get tears in my eyes of what that person went through. And even now, later in life, um, there's, I've noticed a certain trigger point. So we, you could be having a conversation in a group of friends and suddenly this person will I can see the physical um, self of that person changing. So, um, for instance, like in the moment, they're in the moment they're signs. talking about it, right. and it's 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 almost like a bit of a rage, anger, yes, um, yes. despair, upset, yes. and that, and then they say, just stop. That's a trigger point, and yes. you know, you're reminding me, or mm. there, you, somebody's reminding you, or someone has reminded me. And I'm, for me, that's quite interesting that something's happened before. It's not been processed clearly because it's coming up today. And many, they many in a way that yes. looks not normal. No, and the pain is there the physically, pain. and so what what's would, going on here? Yeah, what's going on? And and obviously, people when they go through things, you know, you, we were talking in, in previous mornings, and please do go back and listen to Sister Barak's, you know, um, amazing talks that we've had. But people go um, have trauma from before, before, and they have an acceptance. So they go yes. through the grieving process. And one of our mornings, we spoke about grief. Um, but what's happening here then? Is there not a process of grief and acceptance? Is it just there in the back, and it's now emerging years later? And that's exactly how you describe it. Yes, because something could happen in the moment that reminds them and if they haven't done the proper therapy, right. then it will come back. So what's going on, but interestingly here, biologically, and subhanAllah, yeah. they remember something. So there's a memory to the trauma, and in the moment they're reliving it, even though they're physically safe, they don't feel yeah. emotionally safe. Why? Because the emotions of that memory, they're still intact. Biologically, the neural transmitters and pathways are strong wow. in connection to this memory. In trauma therapy, you want to cut that. What you witnessed, what you saw mm. from your friend there, is this person was living the memory again. It, the connection, yeah. there was, there, it's strong. And so that's why in trauma therapy, we don't repeat the story over and over again. We work on breaking the memory yeah. to the feeling. So, Right, okay. So how we go through that is we talk about control, mm -hmm. right? We talk about you don't have control over what happened to you. Mm -hmm. And that's really, it. you feel powerless, yeah. right? So you do not, this is part of the validation and the, um, the acceptance, okay. right? So we talk about you do not have control over the incident that happened to you. But what do you have control over now? You have control over how you choose to respond to this incident. Mm -hmm. Choose to respond. There is a choice. In that split second where we are triggered and we go mm. is because we're not aware. But when we talk about awareness and therapy, it's a build up to that, right? And the more you practice that awareness, the more you can break that, that connection to the memory mm -hmm. and the symptoms that you are experiencing. So I do a lot of this in my therapy, going back in time. But the client has to be ready for that, right? Mm. And so we, we ground them. We do breathing meditative techniques where they feel safe you know, that they're, they're comfortable. And we go back to the memory knowing that they cannot be hurt, oh. right? And we work on changing how they feel yeah. about the memory. And subhanAllah, we have the power to change how we feel about memory by going back in time to that memory. Do you go back, changing. It, do you go back in it as the person you were then or as an outsider now that you're a different person and you're going into? Depends what they want. They can go back as that inner child or they can go back as their adult self 
comforting that child, telling them, it's okay, I turned out okay. Oh, I'm so here to sad. give you support. Yeah. But I find it so powerful yeah. and effective when you see that the older self gives that love to the mm. younger self, the support, and it breaks that connection because that child, that inner younger self of yours, it's is frightened, yeah, it's vulnerable. is terrified, it's vulnerable. Yeah. When they were sexually molested or assaulted or abused, who is there to protect them if not, not their family? Yeah. And I see a lot of survivors, right, mm -hmm. are angry, like you said, and angry at their family. Why didn't you protect me? Where were you, for example? So we look at that. We look at how you can go back in time to protect to give comfort and support to that inner self and to break the connection of the, mm. the memory mm. to the negative emotions involved. Does it's that so involve them going, when they're going through that journey, that there are lots of tears and emotion, all that is being relived? They, they exhibit the physical symptoms at times and you can see them like, you know, shaking, breathing, wow. and, and, and it's happening. But then we assure them yeah. that they are in a safe space and keep reminding them of breathing, the grounding techniques mm. in session, and sometimes, you know, you need to do this a few times or even just one time. And then mm. you can, uh, you tell them, hey, this is a wound that's been open. It's raw. Yeah. Let's try and heal it and pack it up slowly. Yeah. And it'll take time to heal. But it's, it's incredible when it's you watch empowered. this process. Yeah. And, in this, and this is where they take control back in power of how they choose to respond to a situation where they were once powerless. But even speaking to you, you can tell that how, how important is that a therapist is there to help you along that way because it's such a delicate journey to Absolutely. go back, isn't it? We have um, the skills to yes, help with that, yeah. right? And it's not just anybody can do that. Um, I, mean, I don't know how the viewers are, but I find your voice very soothing. So if you're <laughs> in, a, you. in a session with you know, somebody that's actually calming you and giving you that reassurance, that's got to be quite profound for the person that you know, has to go through that such a, a, a difficult emotional journey for of them, course. isn't it? So It is an emotional journey, yeah. like you said, and it's important mm. to have that support and trust in the process. And yeah. I always tell clients, you know, this may take a while, but I'm just asking you, yeah. trust the process. Yeah. Especially you have a good counselor that you trust, Definitely. build a relationship with, yeah. and then you can feel sometimes it takes a few sessions before somebody really opens up to talk about whatever and, it is they And come it's in nice for. to hear, you know, of your positive experiences because, you know, for instance, you know, through life, when you're talking to people, they'll say, yes, I did try counseling, but I didn't like the fact that I went to a dark place. And what they've... So I had... Um, a medical professional um, a friend of mine and went through some difficulty and um, they went through their own um, sort of you know insurance uh, that they have with medics um, some um, some uh, counseling sessions and what they found what she found was that they took her to a place where she said I couldn't come back there was no support mm. to come back oh, into dear. and then I was she said I was balancing this old pain to where I am today and she goes I just couldn't marry the two together and it's awful to hear someone and then she stopped sessions after I think six times she said, it's so too she's too traumatic she's vulnerable and, yeah. and not healing yeah. properly and it's, it's vital that's why to get first of all you know I've had many trainings in this yeah. specifically first my personal interest yeah because I've seen how people are in pain and I can see how they come out of that pain yeah. and we've been trained to do this critical incidences like when there's um, traumatic car accidents or imagine, bus accidents yeah. train accidents we've had that a few years ago our team got the training for it where we can go into classrooms and talk to people who are in sudden shock yeah. right so it's a delicate form of therapy and you need to have somebody with the proper skills to help that person come out of it otherwise they you know, Does it take quite a long time to get, how, how it's, it I mean, you can see long. how long is this piece of string, but it must be quite continuous and regular sessions, you can't just go, and I was just thinking about the children that go through sort of war impact, say in Iraq, um, yes, yes. If someone like you would be such an asset for them, but again, you need that time, don't you? And it commitment. is, and I, and I had the opportunity to go down if, um, to Iraq uh, oh, with sure. the, a, a charity group who yeah. wanted me to look at orphans and, yeah. and widows and talk to them to see what to develop a wellness program yeah. for them in terms of providing a space for the, the trauma they experience. Yeah. You know what's interesting? I, I found that, subhanAllah, I found that although they have experienced trauma with the loss of their father figure in their, in their household, um, these women have so much resilience and strength. Oh, no. So much more than the women in the Western world. I know you cannot compare, no. but I, I couldn't help but feel that feel they have that, that yeah. strength. The resilience because their circumstances has forced them to be so tough but as soon as you gave them the opportunity we had a say, gathering yeah. 
they were talking, they were speaking about all the challenges they were experiencing. So would that have been similar to what you said, that it's a delayed reaction, that they are on a, you know, survival mode, and when it comes down to a little bit of comfort, that they can actually say, do you know what, it's tough. It was It's not easy being a strong woman that people predict, whether that strong woman is in the West dealing as, as a man and a woman, yeah. or a woman in the, you know, in Iraq or in a war-torn country where she's managing other difficulties, you know, um, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it takes a lot out of a woman, doesn't it? It does, so, it does. But no, we've run out of time, unfortunately. Thank you so much. Thank that was you. Really, really, I mean, you've, you've snapped me out of my tiredness last yeah, night. I'm ready for the rest of the shows. And, and we do recommend, again, for those who are experiencing it, whether you see your elders who sometimes have uh, delayed years. Yes. Of, sometimes we see it just quickly here because we don't give much attention sometimes to our elders who are also experiencing mental Definitely. health issues. It's a lot of our elders have experienced it from the wars and mm. they come and live with us here. And sometimes you find them very silent, very quiet, very withdrawn because perhaps they're experiencing it, but we don't label it as such. We didn't, no. we didn't know that that's what they're experiencing. So it's really important to have that awareness and to use again the resources that are available to, so you Definitely. can get the proper support. Because again, you don't have to live with this trauma. No. You if can get a, the support yeah. and help to work through it and live that fulfilling yeah. life and not have those shackles hold you hold down you like down. that. If the past, you know, it needs to be in the past, but we need to have come to a good acceptance to it, don't we? Thank but um, thank you so much again. Bless I'm you. sure many people will benefit from your words of wisdom. And um, inshallah, we'll see you another morning. Inshallah. Um, have a blessed day. And inshallah, now we are going to speak to have a discussion with Dr. Yasser Madani. And it's on obstructive sleep apnea. That'd be a good one. See you soon.